Taco Supreme. I'm gonna tell you right now. Look at that bloody gorgeous setup. Yes. Good morning. Greetings, my pickled pickleball pimping pygmy. Look at that for some sibilance, some onomatopoeia. You're welcome, you old bat. You silly elf. Thanks, man. As if, like, that guy could hear me. Oh, we're gonna go. Uh, onomatopoeia. Could I spell that? Let's try it. Onomatopoeia. O N A M A T E P I A. Hey Siri, spell onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia. O N O M A T O P O E I A. I honestly thought I was pretty close to that. <laughs> My spelling has gone so far downhill since one, just not writing at all anymore and autocorrect. That's no bueno. Uh, I made a note of this because today we're going to shoot the uh, dropping the ball from a drone video, which is a sponsored post for a product that the brand sent. Uh, yeah. Excuse me. But it's, it's a super weird campaign because, right, they have a budget for it, but they've also requested that the product that they sent me for the video gets sent on to someone else afterwards. Now, obviously I'm not paying the costs of that. They're gonna have to cover the costs. But the awkward thing is, is that that arrived over the weekend and they approved the script last night. So I got an email and on that email was them saying, uh, I'll find out some more information, like the shipment hasn't shipped yet, so I'll make sure that gets shipped. And I'm, there's there's a part of me that's like, oh, okay, yeah, let me know when it's shipped, like, because they'll send a second one and then I just have to send one of them back. But I'm not, I, I've sent them an email already just to say like, the product's here, but could you please let me keep it? Please, pretty please. I don't know. I think, honestly, I think sending someone a product for a video and then not letting them keep it after is a terrible marketing strategy. Terrible. Do you know how many other videos I could fit this product? No, you don't. I mean, you don't because <laughs> why would you? But the product I could fit into so many other videos. And like for the cost of a product versus, you know, the potential of it being in other videos, it's just purely business perspective, dumb decision, I think. Now, obviously I, I have my opinions on this and they're quite strong and I don't have all the information from the business side of things, but I feel like that's a very cheap, very small investment for their branding. No bueno. Uh, I also, for the corduroy book, I made a note of all the things that I found were, like I mentioned it yesterday, that reading it to Rugi, we found some things in there that make it a really good video from a story storytelling perspective, make it a really good book from a storytelling perspective. And I found another thing last night that makes it that much better. So we'll read that when we get home. And then, uh, what else is there? Went to Dollar Tree last night to get some like colored paper and things for Rugi to draw on. And I had this idea of trying to get a Fortnite win with the cheapest controller I can find. Or like the cheapest gaming accessories I can find, which from Dollar Tree or like Five Below or something would be dirt cheap. Now one of another creator, a UK creator, a tech creator, say creator again, okay. 
He recently just did a video of making a whole gaming setup with like cheap gear. So I don't want to copy that. And if I do copy that, not copy, but if I go on the same kind of idea and I think it's close enough, then I will mark it down as to where I got the idea from. So like, call that out. Uh, I also saw this video at TikTok of a guy going through the different generations of how someone would get a table at a restaurant when there's a wait. And it came to the millennial and it was essentially millennials would like um, a pushover is what millennials were. And then it goes down to Gen Z and the Gen Z is like, yeah, I checked in on the app 45 minutes ago. And of course they get seated immediately. I don't know if you're not using apps for everything, buying food, checking in, doing all this kind of stuff, what are you doing? It makes things so much faster. Like Sonic, for example, the fast food chain, drinks were always half price on the app. I don't know if it is anymore. And it's so much faster. McDonald's, all the coupons. Domino's, all the coupons. Now we don't eat fast food that much. I think mainly just because Shay's pregnant. <laughs> Otherwise we would be. But yeah, apps for ordering food and booking in everywhere, so much better. It amazes me that people, like when I meet up with friends and we like try and order something, it amazes me that none of them have the apps for it. Or like think of using the apps, they're all just like, it's phone call or order like online, like on the web browser. Well, I'm just, I'm just a super advanced millennial. I think that's what it is. You cross in bro or, are oh, you just waiting there? Okay. And then I saw a video of, I don't know his name from the side men, the, I guess he's got like reddish ginger hair, but him and his wife have a podcast. Anyway, one of the clips I just saw this morning was of him with the most atrocious headphone dimp, a dimp, dimple. I don't know what you would call it. And so I'm thinking of, you know, just for fun, trying to get the best headphone dimple I can, which would mean like blowing out my hair, making it super big and poofy, and then sticking on headphones for however long and just seeing how bad it looks. I feel like that would be kind of a funny, even if it's not a TikTok, just like a funny bit or a skit. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna have breakfast and then I'll do the corduroy book. I might do it as I read to Rugi. I might film that. He's really cute uh, reading it. But And then we're gonna go and shoot the uh, video today, the dropping the ball from a drone. It's not as cold as I thought it was gonna be. So that's, that is bueno. All right, I'll see you, see you shortly. Okay, will you um, read the, or film the pages of these books, please? I... Can I read it to him? Can you film the pages, please? Just the pages? Yeah. Not you two? No, just the pages. Why? Because uh, I was you know, I was talking about the storytelling parts of this in the vlog. Mm. Lila, I think I'm actually sat on your head. All right, Rugis. Oh, he's Cordoy! Okay. This is Cordoy. Lila. <laughs> Cordoy is a bear who once lived in the toy department of a big store. Day after day, he waited with all the other animals and dolls for somebody else to come along and take him home. I'm just wondering, you want me to do this for the whole book? <laughs> yes, yeah, so maybe a different position. <laughs> hey! Well, everybody's in the way. <laughs> Get Ruggie. Ruggie. Oh, where's Corduroy? Mm. Yeah, the store was always filled with shoppers buying all sorts of things but no one ever seemed to want a small bear in green overalls. Then one morning, a little girl stopped and looked straight into Corduroy's bright eyes. What are we doing? We can't skip to there. Oh, mummy, she said. Look, there's the very bear I've always wanted. Not today, dear, her mother sighed. I spent too much money already. Besides, he doesn't look new. He's lost the button to one of his shoulder straps. Corduroy watched them sadly as they walked away. Oh, poor Corduroy. 
I didn't know I'd lost a button, he said to himself. Tonight I'll go and see if I can find it. <sighs> Late that evening, when all the shoppers had gone home and the doors were shut and locked, Corduroy climbed carefully down from his shelf and began searching everywhere on the floor for his lost button. Suddenly he felt the floor moving under him. Quite by accident, he had stepped onto an escalator. And up he went. Could this be a mountain, he wondered. I think I've always wanted to climb a mountain. There he is, he's going up. Remember that. He stepped off the escalator as it reached the next floor and there before his eyes was a most amazing sight. Well, we can't just skip today. Tables and chairs and lamps and sofas and rows and rows of beds. This must be a palace, Corduroy grasped. Gasped. I guess I've always wanted to live in a palace. What happened there, Mr. Woogers? He wandered around admiring the furniture. This must be a bed, he said. I've always wanted to sleep in a bed. Remember that. And up he crawled onto a large, thick mattress. All at once he saw something small and round. Why, here's my button, he cried. And he tried to pick it up. But like all the other buttons on the mattress, it was tied down tight. <gasps> he yanked and pulled with both his paws until pop, off came the button and off the mattress corduroy toppled. Oh, there's corduroy. Oh yeah, your bear. You want your bear? Okay. Yeah. Is that your corduroy? There you go. Oh, you fell off. Got corduroy. And bang into a floor lamp. Yeah, Over yeah. it fell with a cash. Yeah. Clash, clash. No, it's right here, buddy. He's right here. Corduroy didn't know it, but there was someone else awake in the store. The night watchman was going his rounds on the floor above. <gasps> Shall I put him in a box? <laughs> Let's go to this page, Ruby, and you can see Corduroy. I'm Lisa, she said, and you're going to be my very own bear. Last night I counted what I've saved in my piggy bank and my mother said I could bring you home. Shall I put him in a box for you? The sales lady asked. Oh, no, thank you, Lisa answered. And she carried Corduroy home in her arms. She ran all the way up four flights of stairs into her family's apartment and straight to her room. That's the climbing the mountain. Corduroy blinked. Oh, look at Corduroy in his room. Look at Corduroy. There was a chair and a chest of drawers and alongside a girl-sized bed stood a little bed just the right size for him. The room was small, nothing like that enormous place in the department store. That's where he gets his bed. He's always wanted a bed. I want to read this page. Look, she's sewing him up. That one? Okay. That's it. This is the second to last page. Lisa sat down with Corduroy on her lap and began to sew a button on his overalls. I like you the way you are, she said, but you'll be more comfortable with a shoulder strap yeah. fastened. All done? Hey, let me put it under the bed. Uh. Cool, thank you. So, yeah, here, Corduroy. Um, has always wanted to climb a mountain, which links into, come on, him going up the stairs here. And then the next thing is the mattress. Like he says, he's always wanted a bed. Uh, always wanted to sleep in a bed. And then, there you go. He has his own little bed. And then the stitching was the really nice thing. Really was up. Okay, how tell you right now um, so this is the product we'll be using hold on this big beefy boy I've used it and then I put it back in the box until it was time and now it's time Thought they'd sent it with no charging cables. Alright, so I've seen 
Mr. Beast did a video the other day where he built a hundred wells. I haven't seen the video, but I have seen a couple of videos of people complaining about him building wells in Africa because it's racist or some other crap. Are you... What the... What is going on? Where... Where's the well that you've built? You know? What are you doing? I can understand from a... There's a... The part perspective of you are... Um, you are using them for content. But the overall outcome is good. If... If Jimmy didn't make videos... And didn't... We'll say use, but I'll use that very lightly. And didn't use these kids to make the um, the wells for all of these hot like how many villages no don't have wells anymore that doesn't make any sense what am i trying to say if jimmy doesn't have a so if mr beast doesn't have a massive following then he can't make these videos so he does have a massive following if these people don't have running water What am I trying to say? I'm basically saying that overall, it's just a very good thing. <laughs> it blows my mind that people can complain about this kind of stuff. I just... Like, I think my problem that I'm having is, <laughs> is probably an aneurysm. But also the fact that I, I just cannot understand how these people think to be mad at someone like Mr. Beast for building wells for people. <sighs> that I just don't know how to put it into words, really. Alright, let's plug this batty in. Batty stands for battery, not batty boy. I mean, it could also stand for batty boy, but... Alright, got that charging. So, this whole thing... Excuse me. Is meant to charge from 0 to 100 in 58 minutes. So, let's time it. Uh, timer start. I'm going to set a timer for 58 minutes actually. And we'll see what happens. We'll see where we are at that time. Because right now it's got so little juice. Oh gosh. Uh, it's at 30%. So. I don't know what the math is on that. We'll just cut that by 33%. All right, yeah, good job. What? I bought a load of things from Dollar Tree last night when we went. I th I've tried to buy weird things that I've never tried before. Chocolate animal crackers. These are going to go in comparison to Cadbury's Animal Crackers, which are amazing, by the way. So there's one. Sour Taffy. Yummy. All right, so uh, sunflower seeds are a thing that I think is just an American thing, right? Like, no one else does them. So you, you take the seed, for anyone not American, you put the whole seed in your mouth, normally like a clump at a time, and then you use your teeth and tongue to split it. You eat the seed, spit out the casing. Look what I found. Actually, I'm going to do this one first. Bacon flavor. And then I saw Taco Supreme flavor. So I just cleaned my teeth, so I think we'll wait a little bit before trying one of those. I'm thinking we try one of these a day. And then...
pizza, pizza flavor stuffed pretzels. Honestly, those look like dog chews, don't they? Like, yeah, I could feed that to my dog as I teach her to be a good girl. So yeah, the cholesterol goes through the roof when you have one of these, apparently. It's made up. Uh, yeah, give me... At some point today, we'll try one of these. Just not when my mouth tastes like minty freshness. All right, I was... I text Kenny, actually. I listened to his voice message because... The script for this dropping ball from a drone video with the charger got approved last night, which is good. But they asked that I highlight how many things you can charge at the same time. So my thinking is that I plug in a bunch of weird things for people to comment on. So I asked Kenny what he thought. One of my ideas is that I plug in a George Foreman. I, I don't know why, I just thought that would be funny. So let's listen to this. I would say hair dryer, curling iron, lights. Hair dryer, curling iron. You got a pen? Hair dryer, curling iron, lights. I like that. George Foreman, an air fryer, a blender. <laughs> uh, fryer. Blender. Kenny is like the king of adding weird things into his videos, by the way, for, for the comment benefit and entertainment. Um, you could try to power a PC off it and like set it out in the front yard or something like that. Those are just a couple of things that come to my mind right away. Dude, the air fryer and blender is amazing. That gave me the idea of also taking a space heater. So I think it's going to be the George Foreman, a space heater, some kind of lamp. I, I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, that's good. What else was I going to do for that? I can really go out and film that whenever. So as soon as this thing is charged, we'll go. Which should be in less than 50 minutes. So I'm gonna start uploading the YouTube video. The socials automation seems to be running very, seems to be running very smoothly. And the dude has been uploading edited videos, so. It's, the moment, it's so nice seeing this all come together. Like from all the work that I've put in over the past, past like 30 days or something. Not, I wouldn't say I put in that much work actually. I would say it's been more of like managing it. I, I definitely expected, so the process was, I wanted a Zapier automation built and I wanted to find a video editor, some very basic video editing. So I went on Fiverr, had a quick look around. Honestly, finding someone wasn't too bad at all. That was pretty easy. But the problem you come into is when you go by price, you more often than not get what you pay for. So I ended up going with a, a guy who offered a like half the price of the next closest for the Zapier automation. Turns out the dude didn't really know what he was doing. So I, I've probably spent like, I'd say at least 20 to 30 hours, if not more, helping get that set up. And at that point, I could have just done it myself for way less and have a better understanding. But it's working now and I'm glad I didn't have to ditch it and go pay, try and pay someone else, you know, find the money to pay someone else. Yeah. Really pumped that it's set up. But the the other thing 
is that the video editor, he seems to be uploading, there's a long gap in between each video being uploaded to the Google Drive, which seems weird because it gives me the impression that he's taking a long time to edit these videos one by one. And I don't know, in one of the previous videos, I was, I was able to edit 15, I can't remember. Oh gosh. It was a lot. No, it was like, I literally, I can't remember. It was a lot in a small amount of time. Like at least 15 videos in less than 20 minutes. Um, and I think, I don't think he's even uploaded 15 yet. He's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He's only done nine videos in the past, like, I guess, 24 hours. Yeah, I think I will suggest or see how he's doing it so that, you know, maybe I can help him speed it up. We'll see. All right, I'm going to finish up the bit of the YouTube video, take care of a few emails, and then we'll get ready to go shooting. Yes. Just listen to this thing. So the timer has got 21 minutes left. Just listen. Oh, that reminds me. <laughs> uh, last night, Duda wanted to go out. So it's like 2.30, okay? And she does this thing where Hang on. She will, she'll come over to my side of, the side of the bed. So I'm lying down. I either lie like straight on my back. Hang on, let me give you a, a reenactment. Reenaction, reenactment. All right, so. I'm lying, I'm lying down like this, okay? Bugger off. And she'll come over to my side of the bed here and before she starts doing the next thing, she'll rip out all of her claws and she'll just drag it across my arm, right? Which is normally out of the covers. But then if I'm this way round, she just rips it all the way across the back of my arm, which is of course very tender. So she'll do that. If she doesn't do that, she'll be, <laughs> she'll be at the door. Right, I've thought this through in my head. So she'll sit at the door like this and she'll just stare over the bed right in my direction and this is what I hear. <laughs> Continuously until I give her enough attention or like I get up to take her out. If that doesn't work, which it normally does, she's over at uh, my side of the bed, like literally like this far from my face. That was 2.30, and then again, just before five o'clock. Which, I normally get up at five, so that's not that big of a deal. But, <laughs> and then she's like sprinting around the garden at the front of the house, like just going back and forth, trying to find the right spot to release the lava that's coming out. <laughs> yeah, all right. Uh, we've got 18 minutes left and 69% complete. Oliver, you're 32. You can't be making jokes like that anymore. It's just not funny. <laughs> this cut, this is, sorry, there are cuts in here because I'm actually stopping the recording, but I thought I would mention it. It's quite interesting here. So my video editor is from Pakistan. And how do I explain it? So he gave me a couple of dates at which he would have these videos completed. And then it all came up to the point of like, I feel like I'm getting scammed. I haven't gotten a response in a while. So I just submitted the, um, the case on PayPal, which is like, get a refund. And then of course he started commenting 
and started working on it. So, and he told me the reason he wasn't working on it was because of his brother's wedding. Now, the way that I would work is that kind of a thing, like just tell me and we just shift and adapt. Like these kind of things, family always comes first. You know, if you're out sick or something like that, like the, the dude who did the Zapier automation, he was out sick, cool. Like whenever you're better, let's get working again. But until then, like take the time you need. But it's quite interesting because that is my mindset. Like if you have a problem, tell me and we'll just figure it out. I'd rather know that and we can figure it out than six days later, you're like, oh, sorry, couldn't do anything. I had my brother's wedding. All right, well, we've just lost six days and I thought you were about to scam me. But the, as I'm kind of explaining this to him and sharing that, like, if you do have problems, just tell me, we'll work through it. His response, and I think this is a cultural thing. His response is more like, I will do whatever it takes to get you what you want. And I, I hope no one takes this in a racist format because it's not meant like that. But I have found that the countries in Asia, like India, Pakistan, and some of the others that would be, you know, similar to that. It seems like the culture is more of, and I say this from experience of working in software engineering, lots of Indians. It's more like, I'll tell you what you want to hear rather than the realistic truth, which is it is so annoying. Like you understand, yes, they want to please you and they want to over deliver, but I'd rather just know what the situation is and then we can just deal with it from there. Like I'm not gonna, you know, if you're struggling to figure something out or like you told me it would be done in two days and actually you get a day in and you're like, oh shit, this is gonna be three days, four days. Like as soon as you know, let's have that conversation. I think that was probably the, my earliest learning in the corporate world was when you're not going to meet, as soon as you know you're not going to meet a deadline or you come into something that's going to question your deadline, you have that conversation. Because you, I think the younger mindset thinks I'm doing this piece of work, but if it doesn't get done on time, like it's fine, we'll just like do it next week. But actually there's a knock on effect. There is if you don't get your work done, someone else has promised that work will be done. And maybe there's another piece of work that's coming from that. And like it goes up and up and up the chain until eventually someone's like, oh, sh I, now we can't do all of this because this piece isn't done. But if everyone knows that there's a problem and you're working around it, then everyone can readjust. But I, I wouldn't say, you know, someone who's just starting out, I wouldn't say that's a, a major fault. I think that everyone needs to learn that. And I think understanding how there's a knock-on effect of the work that you do or don't do. Yeah. I also have this weird feeling that I think I would be a very good manager. I probably wouldn't be, but I think I would be. <laughs> What are we at, dude? 88%. It was meant to be done in way less than 58 minutes because we were already a third charged. I don't, maybe it's my power outlets. I don't know. But that was not a full 58 minutes charging. You know, so I got two videos to do, hello, dude, uh, with this product. Uh, one of them is to drop in the ball from the drone, and the other is to power a at-home sauna for as long as it runs out. I think the sauna is meant to arrive, yeah, today. So I think we'll make a five-day series of going in the sauna and see if there are any health benefits. We'll see. But yeah, charging was not it. So, what are you doing, Lilies? Lila, get Judah. Get her, Lilas. Get her, Lila. Get her, Lilas. Get her, Judah. Get her, Judah. Yeah, get her, Judah.
You guys are idiots. Oh, you who, Mr. Sasquatch? It's actually bloody warm. Uh, but I thought I'd wear the jacket because it would be a good way to show the, like, how many times I've tried. So if I wear it to begin with, and then, like, as I'm progressing through, I show a shot of me taking it off. I feel like that is a, a sign of, like, he's been going a long time. He's obviously getting hot. Wow, well explained, Oliver. Uh, all right, so I really like this location for a couple of reasons while I get set up here. So number one, I guess this is really the main reason because there aren't any other reasons for it. But the terrain is so bad, but having these bits of hay in the background make it look so much more amateur, like I'm just a guy who had an idea and found the nearest piece of grass. And we like that. I actually filmed a couple of videos here last year when the Men's World Cup was on. They did pretty well, actually. Um, so we're back. So, it, oh, for goodness sake, you little horny. Come on. There we go, boss man. I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a like a car garage over there. And there, you can hear their drill going, so hopefully that's not on here. For your sake. All right, so we've got the pointer, we've got the drone. I actually bought a bigger memory card for the drone because I feel like the last time I tried to shoot, oh, it is the same, it's the right size. Never mind. There's nothing worse than when you're shooting and you run out of battery. Nothing worse. AIDS? Nah. All right, now here's my, here's how I plan to keep the ball tied down. It's green duct tape. Sorry, pink duct tape, even better. You may also notice... Oh, come on, guys. Yeah, you may also notice that there's, a, there's basically a household here with me. And that is because... How am I doing this? I'll wrap it around. So I, I, I think I mentioned earlier that um, understandably the brand wants to. Sh How dare they go about their business while I am a man child out here, you know? So I was like, let's show off all of the plugs and stuff, but we'll make it funny. This is funny <laughs> to me. All right, cool. So that will attach to the drone. This is the trigger for the drone. And then I'm going to get all these bits set up. So we need a battery. Drone battery in, drone controller. This will need to go on here. All right, so if I don't get major comments on all of this stuff plugged in, then I'm gonna be upset. Oliver, what, what's all of that you brought? Well, I'm glad you asked. I brought a mini fridge. I bought a space heater. I bought my PlayStation 4. 
like so. PlayStation 4. I bought my iPad as a monitor and I can't actually get it connected so I downloaded a, a YouTube video of the loading screen. <laughs> so that'll go there and there. I don't need you on yet. The controller, beautiful. Bro, look, oh dear. Not overly sure <laughs> how this is all gonna fit together, but we'll make it work. I brought the largest, the longest extension, the longest USB-C cable I could find. The power cable for the PlayStation. Very nice. Okay, this, I got this one to charge the iPhone. Where is my iPhone? Donde esta? I don't know where my iPhone, oh, I put it in the front. No texts, that's, that's pretty normal. <laughs> so then that will sit on top, the controller will sit there, I guess. I bought, why did I bring this one? This is for the iPad? Yeah. Okay. Won't plug that in yet. Won't plug my phone in yet. And then the long, this long cable is gonna go to the battery chart the, for the drone. So that will plug in there. The drone will go. So this is the other thing you have to be on the lookout for. So this cable tie is actually from another brand. And so I want to make sure that that's not in it. It's just one of those annoying things that I would have to end up uh, editing out afterwards. I don't really want to have to do. Okay, so there's that. There's the, where's the charger? I need that. Uh, that, that, that. I just had the battery pack, didn't I? Oh, here it is, Oliver. What else is in this bag of goodies? <laughs> oh, the George Foreman. Hell yeah. Oh. The only annoying thing about the George Foreman is, as soon as you plug it in, it gets going. So I can't do that yet. We've got a beard charger. That's always handy to have. Well not, did I, beard charger. Look at the, like, you know those like pick me guys? Oh, I tell you what, one thing that I hated about TikTok like two, three years ago was when you'd find someone who was posting about their like their clothing brand. And it was like everyone loves half naked girls dancing, but no one likes a guy who's on the grind trying to make his own clothing. I'm like, shut the fuck up. You know, like, I get it, business is hard. Like, nobody cares about your problems. So, sorry, we all, we all care about your problems. I do think I'm actually, I think my, I'm okay with it for my life, but I think someone else might say that I'm not particularly empathetic. Um, I can be in a lot of situations, but like, if I think of an example, then I'll say it. But 
right now I don't have any, so that was kind of a waste of time, sorry. <laughs> okay. Oh, I don't need to plug the George Foreman in. Neither do I need to plug the straighteners in, but they can go up here. Come on, straighteners, don't fail me now. And then the Lunchable is going to sit outside the fridge, because, like, why wouldn't it, you know? Dude, look at this setup. This is, this is a sick setup. It's not. It's not, is it? Um, tripod, is there anything else I need from this bag? I've got the microphones, I've got the camera, don't need anything there. The tape, I don't need, that's connected. Batteries and another camera, don't need. So then, let me put you over here. You know, honestly, this is going to be really annoying if this doesn't go up in the air because I haven't tested it yet. I'm just kind of expecting and I'm not sure what I'm going to do. Like I'm feeling, I think that I should move all my, like these bags away. I mean, like just behind this nice thing over here, haystack. All right, phone can me have a look at the script. I, I don't know what it is, but I get like, I don't know if it's weirdly nervous when I come out to shoot as if like, what happens if I don't get all the shots that I need? There's a bloody huge fly. Why are we, what Wi-Fi are we connected to? Scripted. Here we go. Drop a ball from the drone. See if I can catch it. Prove I can catch a ball on my foot. Okay. So. Let's start off with. Um, we'll have a shot of pressing release button and ball dropping okay and then we'll catch it on the foot and catch on foot okay yeah i think we should get going shouldn't we so this camera is the zoni z <laughs> the zoni sv1 Sony ZV-1 or ZV-1, however you want to call it. I like, I love the size of it and I love how much it can do, but I hate how, um, number one, the battery doesn't last any time at all. And number two, the, it's just not a very wide lens. What a big problem to have. All right then, I will, let me, get, let me get this in the right position. I think honestly, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna sit you, excuse me, super wide here. Might go up a bit. So yeah, I think you should be able to capture most, if not bloody everything. Uh, okay, let's go there. Okay, and then this one. I'm just switching this to manual mode because I, um, I don't know what I'm saying. And 
then the shutter speed. Still a bit bright. Let me tighten you up. Get that shot. I think that's a nice shot. Um, might actually be too far away. Like it'd be quite nice to have this stuff in the background. Um, so we're gonna have we just get the drone up in the air film me hitting the release button so a shot of me filming the release button and then that camera will watch it come down and catch it on the foot I think that's what we do let's get the drone set up do you find this interesting watching someone go about making a video like this? Or is there a part of you that like, that's like, bloody hell dude, you take a long time to do anything. All right, let's check the thing actually, the trigger actually works. It does. What if I just get that shot? Like it's, this is a pretty hard shot to get with two hands. Lovely. I don't even know if I need to really uh, show how the um, ball is falling out from the drone. But I will get this shot. So bright. All right. No, come on. Shit.
thought this would do it. I'm actually not sure what to do. I should have checked that this was strong enough before I did anything. Do you think it's possible that the this string isn't long enough and so it's just push it's causing downforce on the ball which is increasing the weight? Like what if I had longer string? Um, uh, I don't know, like, I mean, worst comes to worst. I go and buy an even smaller ball, but it still means I have to put all this stuff back in the car and I have it set up really nicely. Let's try this. The hell? The hell? It's so heavy. Aircraft rolled over. What the hell does that mean? It is so close, this is so annoying. I'm not kidding, I really am considering like cutting out patches on this ball. Like the more I can take off, 
I think that's our move. I think that's what I have to do. You know, come over and join me. Darn it, dude. You see this on the news tomorrow. Idiot TikToker rushed to hospital after stabbing himself. It wasn't my fault. I'm from England. That's all we do. It's the best way to do this. Do I go in like a like I'm about to carve up a small child? I think so. Make sure I have to keep all these pieces because I'm going to weigh them all when I get back and see how much weight I actually needed to take off. This is ridiculous, isn't it? There's no padding. What am I going to do? Good job my knife is bloody sharp. Just so we're clear, it's not. Ruining a brand new football. Oh no, well, actually, this is like now like a ball that we all used to have in school. So in England, before I went to boarding school, every break we had, every recess, we were playing football on the, what we call the tennis courts. You would just destroy your school shoes. Must have been hell for parents. And then everyone just started wearing like uh, some kind of soccer shoes. Like I think in America you probably call them, like we call them Astros. But in America it's probably, I mean, the, maybe the closest thing you'd call it is a pair of like tennis shoes, which I always thought it's kind of a weird saying because most of the shoes that people call tennis shoes don't even seem like things you'd be playing tennis in. I'm also not, I don't have a huge desire to go and get another ball, you know, like to pay more money for another ball. So I'd rather do what I can here. And I think, I think we're making moves. Come on, bruv. All right, we might be here a while and I don't know if I have that much to talk about. <laughs> so if it cuts out here, you'll know why, because I'm not gonna request you sit through what seems like the flipping four hours that this is gonna take. Oh. Might have gone a bit low there. So I've been playing, I haven't really gotten to play very much, just like an hour or two at a time. But some of the OG Fortnite, I played like two hours the day it came out, and two or three hours the day it came out. And it's crazy. The, um, like the, the feeling of nostalgia that comes back with just playing a video game. Like I've never really been into video games and I, don't, I literally do not play any other video game but Fortnite. Like I just, like people tell me about games that are good and I think I just don't get them because I would rather not spend time playing video games. It's nice, don't get me wrong, I think video games have their place and I, I think it's a really good bit of downtime. But when you finish playing the game, how do you feel? Do you feel like that was time well spent? And I, I really do believe that like, 
they can be really good in terms of you know for downtime for being that kind of we'll call it mind numbing it's like an no not mind numbing because you're thinking the whole time but it's it's a, an escape almost and i don't mean i'm not i really don't mean to put video games down that's that's definitely not what i'm saying like i've had so many i wouldn't say so many arguments but when i hear people saying how stupid it is that people play video games and how stupid it is that people make money off of video games i look at them and i think like you just have no idea how entertainment works like if people want to watch it then there's value there is that oh i think i mentioned this a, a couple of days ago Oh, I thought I punctured it. I mentioned this a couple of days ago that um, I didn't mention it, but my wife and I were talking about it. That was it. <laughs> Mixing up now. Uh, I said, do you ever look forward to your show? She likes the kind of like Housewives of Atlanta and that crap, which don't get me wrong. There's some crazy juicy parts to that. So I asked her, do you look forward to those shows coming out? And I asked that question because she doesn't understand why people like watch and follow people on social media. Like they like vlog stuff like this, she doesn't understand it. And I was trying to explain the way I felt when Casey Neistat was daily uploading in his prime. And I just remember the feeling of really I just couldn't wait for the next video to come out. Like every one of them was so good. It's just like, it's, it wasn't an escape from my reality, but it was like getting an inside look at someone else's life, even though, you know, it was curated and whatnot. You know, a life that I will never lead. It was very interesting to see that. And then the other day, no, yesterday, that was it. We were talking about one of Keith Lee's videos and how he went to a restaurant. He's, he sent his parents in first or his family in first and they said they didn't have any seats. And then when he came in, they magically made a table for him. And uh, dude, the video he made, discuss, like sharing all of this information was so good. It was so mature. Like he touches on so many of the points because when my wife told me the situation, it seemed like he was upset and then like, what's the, t I don't know if the term's right, dogged on the, the company in the video. But I watched the video with her and it was very different to that. It was actually very respectful and he shared his point of view very well and I didn't see any room in there for anyone to be annoyed at him. But anyway, she then said, my wife then said, I, for some reason, I really enjoy watching his videos now. And I was like, there it is, there it is. I don't think, like, I don't think she realizes why she enjoys watching it. I don't think most people do. But because I'm in this kind of world, it's this weird connection you feel, like with someone being so open and honest, it feels like they're sending you just a long Snapchat, a long personal video. When there's no fancy editing, there's no dramatic, there's no dramatizations, it's just, it, it's just what it is. And it's funny how we start just connecting with people Dude, that's, that's quite good. We don't know them. And I, I mean, I think it can be kind of harmful too, because if you're following someone and their life is way better than yours and you look at their situation and say, oh, I'll never be there, then, that's, then that sucks. And I, I've come around to this idea that I really dislike the content where things are perfect. You know, where people try and make their life look perfect unless 
they do live that perfect life. Like there's this Patrick Bateman kind of guy on TikTok and he makes these, like, I don't know, getting his bed ready videos and cleaning his house. And it's psycho vibes, absolute psycho vibes. But, um, you know, there's a, there's a market of people who like that, but for the average person, like it, it looks like this guy is either single or he, he just lives alone. And perhaps he just manages his time really well, but for the average person, the average person does not have the time to flip an eye in their bed sheet every day. Now that's not to say that he's bad for making that content, of course not. But I think when people are watching content, and I guess you, you know, there's a, in some part, you could say the same for me, maybe, in things that I do. Like if, I don't know, but, um, there are people watching that saying, oh, I want this life, but I can never have it. And like, they wish away their life, thinking that they always need to do better. There's definitely a very toxic part to social media. But when I made the switch to the type of content I make now, it was a very conscious decision that I would... For the story, you know, some of it is made up for the, you know, theatrics of it. But in terms of being um, honest and, you know, not making things perfect, I think that was a, a really good move. I like that I made that move. <laughs> also, because it makes editing and filming so much easier. Like, everything doesn't have to be perfect. Like, I used to be deep into photography and videography. Like, one of my old YouTube channels was all just tutorials for videography and video editing. And I, you know, I still like it and I think Every now and again, if I go somewhere cool, it would be nice to put like a little montage in these videos as I, you know, enjoy filming. That, I've taken a lot off now. Shall I just do all of them? Honestly, I forgot where I started on that topic. But hopefully we ended in a half decent place. I had this idea today. My dad, my parents are coming over in like just over a month. So they're coming over for Christmas. And my dad sent me a message today. He said, uh, sent me a product and said, can you see like how much this costs over there? So, of course, I look it up and it's actually more expensive. And he's saying, oh, okay, well, maybe we can go to some cycle shops nearby when I come over there. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sure we could find some. I have no idea where they are, but we'll find some. But the chances that they carry this specific, well, sorry, he really likes the idea of buying something from a store as if, you know, for the memory of it. So he can say that, you know, he bought these in a store from Kansas where his son lives. I think that's pretty cool. But I want him to have that item that he was looking for. I think that's what he's gonna be looking for. So I'll, I will call up a couple of cycle stores around here, see if they have it. If they don't, I'll order it in to my house and then I'll take it to the shop before, or I, like I'm, yeah, take it to the shop before my parents arrive and be like, look, uh, would you, how do you feel about holding this? Like, I'll bring my dad to your store to try and pick out some items, but how do you feel about holding this until, you know, X day, X time, whatever? And then he can come in the store and get it from the store. I feel like that would be quite nice. Yeah, then I make him pay for it.
last time he was here, my both my parents were here. <laughs> he gave me. I, I guess they they went to Canada, you know, a few months before that, and <laughs> he gave me like eighty Canadian dollars. And he was like, "You you'll be okay to to change these up, won't you? And you can just do what you want with them." It's like, "Yeah, I'm sure I could find a way, but to to exchange them." <laughs> You need $100 at most places. Honestly, I haven't really looked around too much, but you need $100 at most places to be able to do it. So I've just got 80 Canadian dollars that have been sat in a drawer for almost a year now. Bet you're glad you stuck around for that piece of information. <laughs> At this point, it's likely you hadn't seen yesterday's video or the day before. But taking, like, just, it was a nice day, just sticking on my rollerblades and just going for a cruise down to the park. In the middle of the day, it was, it was so flipping nice. It was a massive change in mindset for me. It was a real, like, a switch just changing my mind from I don't need to be at my desk eight hours a day anymore. I can just go and do the things I want to do. That, that feels like at least 50 grams. Yeah, let's try that. Let's see. Shall we? Shall we? Put the knife away. Oh, my shoe's undone. I'm really glad it's not cold out here because otherwise I'd be back in the car doing this. Oh dear. Now what did I do with this? Oh, it's on here, good. I'll probably use a new bit of uh, tape. This sounds a bit gammy now. Come on, you Willy Wonka. Come on. You know, so it was, I don't know why, but it was so funny when we were in school to call someone like a Jew, you know, like, Everyone did it. Why was that so funny? I look back at it now and like, what did the Jews do wrong to deserve any of that? <laughs> like, I do also look at it from this perspective of like, at the time it was funny. Like it didn't, I didn't know anything about Jews at the time. Honestly, I still don't. But at the time it wasn't like, oh yeah, like we're making fun of Jews because we hate Jews. <laughs> It was just, it was what it was. All right, fingers crossed. Come on, please. What? Oh, I need to turn it off and back on again. Any time today. Please work. Yeah. 
We are up in the air. No! Alright, looks like I'm taking off the rest of the patches. Oh, for goodness sake. How annoying is that? It's so close. I had another thought this morning, which was, um, like this is kind of a, you know, we'll call this like a laid back vlog. Like the main driver in the vlog is that, you know, I'm a content creator and I'm sharing how I do that. But there are times I want to film uh, things that happen in my family. Like, like let's just say the corduroy book that I'm going to read to Rugi. I feel like that's that's a very personal thing to share. And there's part of me that thinks it's it's going to be weird to share it. And if it is too intimate, then I'll take it out and I'll just like read it myself. But I really want to be careful of not crossing this line into making this about uh, my family, right? Like they're a huge part of my life and I love spending time with them, but they, they didn't sign up for, for these vlogs, they didn't sign up to do this. And I want to make sure that I'm, you know, being respectful of that. I think, I think it's really bad to make your kids, like have your kids in your vlogs, in your videos, or on your, in your content. Yes, they're set for life with, like, you know, give them their own account, they're set for life with the money they can earn, right? That's, that's fair. But they didn't choose that life. Like, let's say I'm going to act like I'm attacking the LeBrant family, weirdly, just because I saw one of their videos today, which I've, I've n like never seen one of their videos on TikTok before. And it's like, what if your kid grows up and doesn't want that type of life? They don't have a choice now. Like everyone knows who they are. They know what they look like. Like, yeah, they can try and go into a corporate world, a corporate setting, but they can't go shopping on their own. They can't go out in public on their own. Maybe I'm wrong, like maybe, maybe uh, their lives aren't as extreme as I'm saying. So let's say I'm talking on a hypothetical that now they're like, they're just, they're famous people. They get recognized everywhere and they'll never have a normal life. Everyone will treat them differently because of who they are, because of how much of a following they have. And I don't want, I don't want that for Rugi. So I think it's okay to have him in these videos, like while he's still really young and like his face is still going to change like crazy because no one's going to recognize him. But then, like this is all on the idea too, that I ever get to a place where you know, people recognize me and I, you know, more views than I have than we get now. Which, like, let's not, let's be realistic here. Yeah, the views are, are nice. Like, it's really nice to be able to see that something you've created, people enjoy watching. Um, 
but I'm not, I'm certainly not doing this for a, a fame perspective. Like I've, <laughs> I think if I was doing this for a fame perspective, I would not have been doing this this long. I would have given up a long time ago. Like considering how long I've been doing it for and how I would say little success I've seen in that time. It's only real, really the past two, three years that I've seen, like, what do they call it? The fruits of my labor. Oh gosh, that was close. Can you imagine? I would be so mad. I would be fuming if I got to the last, this is like just a few patches from the end. It is bloody warm now as well. Last three patches. And this has to work. I also think that now because of how scabby this ball looks, that's probably gonna bring in some comments too. And it's, you know, I go back and forth on these kind of things that <sighs> the fact that, you know, I couldn't get the drone off the ground because the ball was too heavy and now look what I'm having to do, like, is entertaining. Like, if I could make it into a, you know, entertaining format, but it doesn't really change the storyline. I think if I was, let's say, I'm on my last battery, I don't have a charger, and I need to conserve battery power, then maybe I would, you know, make this part of the video. But because this is before I've even managed to get the ball from the drone, you'd have people questioning, is he even going to do this? Like, I'm not waiting for, around for him to sort of shave weight off the ball just to be able to get it in the air. That's not what I came for. Okay, and then we leave the valve one. The valve. All right, boy, let's do this. We get some more tape. All my trash. Gosh, I will say something that <laughs> I will. I will you, Oliver, because it's not like you've been saying something for the last bloody forever. Um. Oh yeah. You know how huge content creators get caught up with doing something really stupid? Like let's say, I think the most recent one is a guy called Phidias on YouTube, who did a video of trying to cross Japan with no money. And essentially the problem was is that he disrespected Japan and their culture. Like that, you know, a, a Japan as a country and a culture I don't know much about it, but I would say they're a culture of um, evading conflict. Now, they'd rather not deal with conflict. 
But when you do something like that, they're kind of like forced into that conflict. So something like that, or like, let's say Logan Paul in Japan, you get, you can see how you make those kind of choices because you get so wrapped up in the concepts and the ideas that are going to bring in views and something crazier than the last one that you oversee, you overlook the, like, the deeper impact of whatever choice it is you're making. Now, those guys, like they should have teams of people around them to help them decide if they're making a good choice or not. Come on. The home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. Come on, please. What the hell? Why are you doing that again? Propellers are all on. We will make this happen. What is going on? You guys are on, you're good. What's the problem? Yeah, the check is complete. What? Brick. I'm going to see if I have some longer thread in the car. Hang on. Okay, current situation. I am using dog bags and seeing if I can add like the extra height, extra length. Who knows, not me. <laughs> so if I, I feel like that still needs to be at the top. So if I take this out and I wrap like around here, tie a knot, Like either this is going to be super genius and be like, oh my gosh, Oliver, wow, how did you manage that? Or nothing. And then this goes on to here. And then my next option is to <laughs> is to use a mask for some extra height. What a ridiculous time that was. Oh wait, you're charging.
Now why aren't you charging? I don't know what that means. There we go. Now we're juicing. Come on, please work. I literally cannot come all this way with all this effort and it not work. The state of this situation. Come on. Yes! It was just string. All right, I don't think I have too many tries at this. It struggles to go up in height. No! It said battery overcurrent. Oh yeah. Yeah, it doesn't smell very good. Darn. I think this is it. I have to go and get a different ball. That's so annoying. So, so annoying. Alright, I think... I'm gonna have to go to Academy Sports, which means putting all this back in the cart. Look at this setup! Look at that bloody gorgeous setup! I'm actually gonna take a picture so I know what it looks like when I come back. Alright. Alright, well, I'll, um, I'm gonna put this back, get the stuff, and we'll be back in a jiffy. <laughs> Alright. There's no bueno. I bought the new ball. This is a size 3. It's heavier than the size 5. I don't know how that worked. I also bought some fishing line. Because I thought that would be, you know, better as well. No. Well, that would be better. Um, I'm having a look at DJI online now and just seeing how much their different drones cost. Uh, 
Um, the Air 3, how much is this? I'll share my screen, sorry. Okay. That one is 1K. Alright, this takes a long time to arrive. To arrive. Wonder if Walmart has it in stock. God, you can't see bloody anything to me, can you? You lucky old tart. <laughs> Alright, let's do DJI Air 3. In store. Now uh, they got the Mini 3 in store. November 17th, that's like eight days away from now. Well, we're not gonna get it done today. So either the option is It's, it's so annoying, just because I got all the stuff ready, it's all good to go. Alright, what are our options? A board just seems too heavy for the drone. Why am I looking? Why am I not just going on Amazon? No, but next day delivery. I could have it here tomorrow morning. DJI Air Three. Crap! Then I need all the batteries and stuff for it. If I do DJI Air 3 payload, DJI Air 3 payload. Oh crap, then I would need another dropping mechanism. How do I make this ball lighter? Do I really just need to hack more off? Should I try that? Yeah, then maybe the fishing line will work. All right, I'm gonna hack as much as I can off of this ball. And hopefully that will give us enough because... Yeah, let's try that. Okay, I think we're set. We've got the ball with the fishing tape. I'm gonna get you into position and then get the camera set up, like the main one for the videos. And then I think we're good. Dude, this has been so much work. We've been through ups, we've been through downs, we've been through bloody everything. I always wonder what people are thinking when they stare. Like I've got all this equipment here. I wonder what goes through their heads. Like, oh, that flipping guy from the area is out again. He's on the loose, watch the kids. All right, let's get this up on the drone. This ball is so light, I honestly, I'm not sure if I can even control it. I 
Like, am I concerned that I can actually do this? Definitely. Very definitely. All right, we're almost ready. Come on. Is that 10 feet? All right, are we all in the shot? The drone is not in the shot. Okay. What was that? How did that come off? Okay. Did I accidentally open it? Come on. Come on, please. I don't know why I'm struggling so hard now. Is the line not long enough? Dude, I'm gonna flip and lose my mind. I think I'm gonna have, I got a quick Dirty solution. You dirty boy. And I hope it's gonna work. I have a feeling that it's the downward sensors 
I, mean, I could just turn those off, couldn't I? Let me try turning those off. Settings, safety, obstacle avoidance, display radar map. Damn it. Control. So obstacle avoidance off. Sensors. No, we're not about to go calibrating all of those, are we? Um, okay. Let's give it a tiny bit more length. Like these are the kind of annoying things. Like this is such a, like it's a fun video to do. But it's when things like this don't go to plan. That you contemplate just giving up. All right, come on. Okay. Very nice, that was good. I don't understand why it's going up so slowly. <laughs> At this point, I don't really mind if I burn out the motors. <laughs> I do, I will mind, I'll be really annoyed. The embarrassing part now is everyone else is showing up at this place. God, and since I'm so famous, who knows what's going to happen? You can't see that I'm laughing, I'm joking. Oh! Yes! Come on! Come on! Right, that's about 10 feet, isn't it? No! Why are you coming down?
What is going on? This ball could literally be not be any lighter. This is so incredibly frustrating. All right, come on, bruv. Take off. Yes, the propellers are installed. Check, done. Like, see, that's not going up on its own. you dude it's so annoying the sensors I'm going to flip and do something silly. Do it. Close. Why are you f***ing working now? Now you work fine? What in the world is going on? All right, let's start you off from level ground. 
Oh my gosh. I don't think you realize that I am dying inside. You know that, right? This was my dumbest idea yet. You know, the thing I didn't really think about was because I've cut off so much weight from this ball, it's now so light, which is going to make it so much more difficult to control. Come on, you were doing it. Yes! Come on, Ike. Please work. You cuck. No! At this point, I'm kind of ready just to fake it. Like, we can get the ball in the air, can get the drone in the air, obviously, and then I wanted a shot from the drone of the ball dropping, but... Like, is it the weight? Is it the weight of the ball that's pulling this down? Distance?
no, that's working. I... I don't know what to do. <laughs> so why, when it's high up in the air, would this not work? Right, because that's working fine. Open, close. Open. Close. I literally haven't even started any of this video yet. Now. Gonna try again. All right, come on. This has to work. this thing. Shut up. this? Is that really my problem now? Now you're working. Are we gonna try you again?
No! Off. <laughs> if I hold it for long enough. Come on. What is it? What is the problem? So it works from this button every time, which means it has to be the remote, doesn't it? has to be the remote. All right, I'm calling this for today. I, I've had enough, it's not working. I need to go get new batteries as well. And I just want to crawl into a hole. <laughs> I guess good news is, as of right this second, the brands still think that I haven't received the product. So the, the time hasn't started. <laughs> Okay. All right, well, I'm going to pack this stuff up into the car again, get the batteries tomorrow, make sure it works properly, and then we'll come and do it. See you tomorrow.